Could you show us a couple of tips on the feet before we go back to an, another shot here, just for the viewers at home? Because this is always so difficult as far as how to get the feet clean, how to get the hair that's right around the nails clean. Um, always tend to struggle with that. So if you could give us some tips and what type of blade you're using, what length blade. Again, I'm going to use the 30 on him because he's he's been done forever and he's used to it. You can use a 10. The show edge blades tend to do it a little cleaner, make it a little tidier. We'll pretend we already did the back pads. Now, do you typically do the back before you do the top? I always start with the back. And I set how high I want to go on the ankle by cleaning up this pad, the top of the pad, there's a little crescent shaped area in there. I clean that out and then I come up the sides to just where I can feel the ankle bone on both sides. Then I come in and I clean out the pad area. You always want to come in from the sides because they've got tendons in there and especially your toy poodles you don't want to irritate that or grab it and cut it. So I always come in from the sides. Okay, cut. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, cut. He does agility. He falls all the time. <laughs> and you go in both directions. You kind of have to hold their toes apart with your fingers. I usually use one of my pointer finger and my thumb and stick another one under there to push it forward so you can get in there and get it really clean. Then I come around to the front of the foot. And so I, I did the sides. Can we turn them like? Yeah. The sides of it. So now I know how high I need to go to set the front of the foot. And I just clean off all this excess hair and just to those lines. Now is there a bend in the foot or a certain point that you want to go in and you want to you want to clip up to because a lot of poodles we see the people have clipped the feet too high or they don't clip them enough so can you kind of give us a guide? I don't necessarily go by the a bend. I go by the ankle. There's an ankle bone here and I either go depending on the dog's foot just to below it or halfway up it. I never go past it. And if the dog has a very splayed foot, which means it's really flat, you want it, you can go even lower because that would hide the foot a little more. So once I clean that off, and I know I've got a nice clean line, then I clean off all this hair off the top of the foot. Now you have to start maneuvering with your fingers again. And it's the pointer finger and the thumb. And you, you put a little bit of pressure on the knuckle, and the pointer finger comes up into the web area, and that spreads the toes apart. So you can get in there and clean that toe area between the toes out. And also, by watching what you're doing, I also notice that the hair that is right around the nails, as you press that digit up with your fingers, that hair starts to kind of spread out so it's easier to get to around the nails. And it's another reason I like to use the shorter blade on the feet because it's easier to get those stray hairs that stick to the nail. I never thought of that. It does. It pushes the nail out so it's easier to get in there. And you can also you can also flip your clipper over and use it um, use the blade backwards. Right. What happens is the cutter part of the blade grabs that hair and it just lifts it off. That's if you're one of those groomers who's really technical and want to make sure they get all of the hair right around the toes, that's a really good technique to use. Yeah, you just want to be careful. I, I've done it on the dogs that have like the fungusy toes. You don't want to do that on them because it will grab the skin and irritate it. But on the dogs that have perfectly normal skin, you can get in there. A lot of times I'll, I'll pick it out with my fingers to get it because you really want to get it. It always hides up under the nail. And also if you have a clipper vac system at home, um, y'all make attachments that, that or y'all have attachments that attach to the Andes Attachments clippers. for most of the Andes clippers. I think the only one right now that they don't have an attachment for is the light speed. 
but you'd have to check with the clipper people just to be sure. But Okay, and your light speed clipper is the one that has the light on the end of it, is that correct? It's the black one with the little light on the on the end. It's, it is a LED lights, and they're good for up to 10 years, so the lights will probably last longer than the clipper. Okay, do you find that helpful as far as when you're grooming dark dogs or black dogs, that sort of thing? When they first came out with it, I played with the prototype, and they said, is it going to sell? And I went... I don't know, how much more is it going to cost to have a light on the clipper? And they, you know, he said, and I said, well, I don't know, the novelty of it, you know. So I got the clipper right before the Atlantic City show that year, and I was doing a black standard. So I said, okay, I better try it before I go to the show. Lit up the whole underside of the dog. I was, like, amazed. So they're awesome, especially if, you're, if you don't have the greatest lighting in your shop or if you do a lot of black dogs black cockers, black poodles. It just lights everything up so you can see what you're doing. Okay, I'm gonna let Diane finish up on the foot and we're gonna come back over. We'll come back over to you when you start on the tail so we can get, basically we would have the poodle face, the poodle feet, and the poodle tail. So we'd wanna learn that as well. I'm gonna talk to one of your reps here really quick. Thank you.